Hi, I'm Bill Fortney and this is Bill Fortney's photo vlog and this is the second volume. I uh, got a little package in the mail the other day from Fujifilm and it was the new Fujifilm X Pro 2 graphite model. This is gorgeous. It's finished in a um, dark gray graphite and it has a matching 23 millimeter f2 lens that's also in graphite. When I saw this love these cameras so much I knew I had to have one so uh, really um, no different than the regular X-Pro2 the internal parts of the camera are all exactly the same it just is in the graphite, uh, graphite color um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about the other day we did a thing about travel photography and I showed this lens the 23 f2 which is 35 f2 equivalent the 35 f2 which is 50 millimeter equivalent and the new 50 millimeter just came in and, and the other day I showed you the 60 as the longer lens in a travel system uh, with the advent of this lens you've got three very compact this is just uh, just as small almost as the other lenses and this just a reversible lens hood which makes it easy to pack but the 50 was the new lens and I wanted to test it and tell you guys about it and in fact last night I posted on my regular uh, blog on BillFortney.com the uh, test of this new lens and the comparison of these lenses. Um, this is just a short vlog about this, this camera and these two lenses. Um, everything I said on the previous vlog about carrying equipment in a smaller system applies. The difference is in this particular video we're looking at the new 50 millimeter um, lens that just came out. It's just now being delivered. It's a, it is a 50mm f2, which is a 75mm equivalent. One of the really nice things about this lens is that it has a 46mm diameter for filters, and you can buy a step-up ring, a, a 46 to 52, which just screws in the front, and then it makes it 52mm here. And I have some older Nikon 3T, 4T diopters, which are extremely... Uh, uh, sharp. They're two element close-up diopters and you can screw that on this lens and basically turn it into a micro lens. It's already tack sharp and those uh, and you can buy diopters today if you can't find those. They're no longer made but you can buy diopters of other brands and they work great. Uh, Canon has some really nice ones now. They still make theirs and uh, I think Hoya has some. There's several people make them uh, and um, if you had that, one close-up diopter and a step-up ring, this can become your portrait lens and it can be a close-up lens. Then you've still got your 50 and your 35 F2, which is of course a 23 F2. Really a small compact system. Um, you can put that in a very small bag and uh, on a general travel assignment or going and doing Americana photography, you really don't need anything more than what's in this, this system right here. Uh, the only thing you lose is the advantage of zooms where if you can't step forward or step back, um, a zoom is handy for that. But uh, these are small, they're fast, they're all F2, so it means you can shoot available light. And also, um, they just travel nicely. All of these have wonderful uh, smooth focusing rings so that manual focusing is wonderful. Uh, they have uh, really good distinctive clicks in the aperture rings um, and they all have hoods made specifically for them. This is the hood from uh, Fuji Films, actually quite expensive, but it was included in this little kit. <clears throat> this is simply one of the uh, go on Amazon and put in that you need a 43 millimeter hood. Find the one that's got the little vents in it like this and it screws right on here and I don't think there's but one or two of these in this size and we've tested it and it works fine it doesn't vignette on the 35 or on the 23 and of course you're not going to use it on the on the biggest lens on the 50 because it comes with a hood and I do have some screw-in hoods that are 52 millimeters to go into that close-up diopter. Um, really uh, glad that uh, Fuji's doing this. This all started in the days of film photography when a lot of people carried some of the Leica M cameras 
and they would have a three lens package that was almost identical to this. They would have a 35 millimeter f2, a 50 f2, and they had a 90 f2 instead of this is equivalent of a 75. Um, but and it was usually a 2.8. There were some f4s. I think there was an f2 as well. But however, the Leica body and these three lenses, even in the film days, uh, was probably a $15,000 investment. And you're looking at um, barely $1,400, $1,500 here. Um, well, uh, including the body, you're, you're looking at maybe, maybe $2,800. But uh, a good little system. Um, really, I'm going to try to use it some, and I'll be posting some little assignments I give myself using this gear and you can judge as to whether it gives good enough coverage. I would encourage you to go to BillFortney.com, look at the photographs that were posted last night. Uh, there's an example of the same subject uh, shot with all three lenses, and then quite a few pictures made with just the new 50 because it's the one I have not thoroughly tested. Um, hope that's helpful. Look forward to seeing you on the next vlog. God bless.